so you begin to face your pain management and that was the four squares back here which are on the board at the top and then you face what's underneath it called the spin where you're racing over things and a, a gentleman said in the break he said yeah look I'm having these come up again and, I, and then he says then I tend to whip myself for them so as things come back and they carry their emotion with them you give yourself a flogging and you start the contrast here you start the contrast again do the snakes and ladders because it is a snake and then you come up and you give it a smudge and then you go on a bit further and it happens less. Remember, it's recursive. Don't whip yourself. You go through things and you say, I'm oh, back to you know, six o'clock again. But from the side, you're spinning in. From the top, you're just doing the wearing out the carpet. So that, that's how it works with our facing things. And so grief is required and we can let things go. And that tornado will drop down. Right? Now... I've got loss of guilt, and I've got assurance of loss of separation, knowing union. I'm not climbing to heaven, I'm, I'm abiding, I'm dropping down and resting. I'm accepting my being, I'm facing all the motions and parts, I'm past pains coming back, I'm beginning to integrate. I've got my pain under control, face my spin. My goodness. Wow. What's left there? My black hole. Oh my God. The thing that you stand over, it drops down forever. If you step into it, you'll drop into it and disappear. I've got defences around it. I don't go near it and don't you probe me near it and don't you activate it. Or I'll have to get angry with you. And if you do, I'll get angry. I will, I will get angry. And I do get angry. Right? Oh, a bit more to go. Before that, my parts... How do I get in touch with my parts? Because they are each emotional and each have their own thoughts, but they're me. This is the feeding of the 5,000. Let no crumb, let no scrap, let no bit be lost. Right? No fragment. No fragment. Now, when parts try and come back earlier, have you guys ever tried to get a squid jag out of something or pull a squid jag through it's got all the do you have squid jags in okay when you're fishing for squid you have a something that comes around it's like an inverted umbrella with with barbs on the end a squid jag and so while squid jags are operating in us which is um, accusing inability to forgive inability to release inability to grieve um, persistent lies, difficult meanings, you can't let parts back. Right? You can't, it hurts. But as you've dropped down through and you've faced yourself and then no longer your parts come home. So they're no longer, the parts are trying to come home but they're no longer dragged on the way forward. They just start coming home. Snell hook is what we call that. A snell hook? Yes, it's got all those little barbs on it. Yeah. Keep the worm or whatever like, like an umbrella? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we have big ones for squid, so. Snail hook. So notice all the little blue bits of yourself. Some people have a couple, some have hundreds. It's, you know, it's all variable, depends what's happened to you. And they begin to come back in. Oh my goodness, look at that rough and tumble your parts come back that's me that's all my bits I can own myself look at it but it's one Hear, O Israel the Lord your God the Lord is one God Hear, O person your bits and all your bits are one person okay hey, don't, don't drive by that I've never heard that I've never heard the connection before. Sorry. You haven't. Is, have you guys I, all heard that? Also, I'll just say it again in a different, different way. Okay. Everything of Father, Son, and Spirit leads to integration and oneness because Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, that's the nature of God. Here, O Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. Everything of darkness leads to splitting and separation and fragmentation. That, that's the foundation of how you approach inner healing. 
So our emotions flow. Wow, the emotions are flowing. Wow, I didn't know I had this much stuff in me. Don't know if I can cope with it, it's coming out at the wrong time. Oh, and then you need a bit of self-control and you've got to start operating out of, continuing to operate out of self-responsibility. I'm fully free and fully responsible for my emotions and actions and thoughts and responsible to you, not for you. I have to maintain my self-responsibility. I can't just vomit on everybody. But you feel like it. But look what's coming up. I don't like this next bit. Alone and scared and hurt your foundational childhood attachment of your black hole. Places you didn't feel loved. Alone and scared and hurt, and it's there. And then the black hole starts dropping, the barriers to the black hole, and kaboom. Now, by this stage, you're knowing the hugs of the father, the only beloved son in the bosom of the father he has made him known. So you start to know the hugs of Jesus on the inside. You know the holding of the Holy Spirit. The love with which the Father loved the Son is in you, but it's not only in you, you're beginning to feel it. Remember, you can't put it in there. You can't put Jesus in there, but your experience of it varies. And the Holy Spirit is the one who opens us to sharing what Jesus has given to us already. If you don't believe it's in there, you're in trouble because you're going to start the whole process of climbing to get back to God, to find, to achieve, to get it, instead of dropping in and resting and abiding and remaining and dropping through the pain. And you're dropping through the pain to meet the everlasting arms. All right? So alone starts going because Jesus is in you. Scared? Well, the love you're experiencing isn't what you felt when you were younger. And hurt, they're comforting you. And it starts dropping. Now, around my black hole, I have my defences and protection of my black hole. Don't you come near it. If you do, you can try to get, I'll be angry. None of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm the only person on the taper in the room who's ever been like that. It's universal. Now they drop, and then I, I can start looking at my black hole. And again, you don't, you don't get into this in a linear way. My, my going through my black hole was forced on me by a situation that I didn't want. Right? And as I... I and um, I remember... It's about 15 years ago, 20, a fair while ago. I was looking, I was forced by this situation and I was looking, the situation had forced me to begin to face, the situation was a stimulus for, but not the source of, my emotions. Does that make sense? I had this stimulus, I didn't like the stimulus, I could turn and attack that person or I could turn and face what was coming at me. And I had, remember having flows through the body like I'd never experienced, all sorts of weird shit. And then I'm looking down at this black hole and it's bottomless. Now, what saved my skin in this situation was A, I knew most of this stuff I was teaching because right, I'd helped other people through it because they need the help, don't they? <laughs> don't they? Other people need the help. How many minutes have I got to go? Halfway there. Halfway there. Now, what, what was in my head and, and flowing through my brain as I was looking was this. He is the image of the invisible God. This is Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. The firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were made in heaven, earth, visible and invisible. He is before him, before all things, and in him all things exist, consist, and held together. So I was looking at this black hole, and I was going, on the other side of that black hole is Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. That, that, and that was really clear in my head. I, like, it, that was firm. 
Because that was firm, I made a decision, I'm going to look at this thing. And for three days, I shook. I was just shaking. I'd go to work, still shaking. I remember sitting in a church service, shaking, could still see it. And I, you know, even though I just made the, I'm, I'm going to face this thing. Because by, by that stage, um, by that stage, a lot of this had been worked through because I'd been thrown under a bus with a vision of the Trinity prior to that, which then cascaded me right through a lot of it. So I made the decision, I'm going to look at this thing. And I shook for three days. And guess what happened then? The bottom, which was black, and I thought it went down forever, was curved. Yeah. And then it tore. And it had frayed edges. Like, um, like hessian tearing. You know, with the bits black. And guess what emerged then? Yeah. Then a pearl emerged. A pearl was at the bottom. Like this lovely white pearl came up. I'm looking at this pearl, and in my brain's all the scriptures running. The gates of the twelve, you know, gates of New Jerusalem are made of a pearl. Pearl is us in Christ, and Christ in us, and the suffering of that. Isn't that beautiful? So I stayed watching it over the next couple of days. The pearl got a crown of thorns on it. This is the crucified one. And then the journey for me went on and the spirit would say, I want you to go down. Do you think that took long? <laughs> Do you think I went down? I remember, I remember the Holy Spirit saying, I want you to go down. So I dropped down inside myself and there's Jesus, right? And there's Jesus holding a little Bruce. And so straight up again, I'm healed. You got it? <coughs> and the journey for me is a long one. And down, up, down, up. And then the Spirit says, Bruce, I want you to go and hop inside yourself, inside little Bruce. And I want you to look into the eyes of Jesus. I, I want to reparent you, Bruce, because you're so screwed. You got it? So that's, 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 that's the journey for me. So, it's, um, so you need to know that these models, people say, oh, Bruce, where did you get your models from? And I, I would say to them, well, I've sat with Christians who are tormented for many years, and that would satisfy most people. And the persistent question will come up, but yeah, well, where do you get models from? I said, oh, they're me. <laughs> the models of me. The model of how screwed I am. I had to think about who I was and what was going on and what was going on in me and my I thought about my, my skate mechanisms, I thought about my comforts, and I, I thought about, I defined everything. I got the idea or the concepts of the judge and the spin from another doctor, and she's written books on it, and that'll be coming out, we'll, we'll reference her later, later. And for the late, my brain's gone, so I can't think of her name. But um, that's the only reason it's not mentioned, I'm trying to think of it. But, um, but it's, my, it's my, my experience. And lo and behold, when you look at your own shit, you discover everybody's the same. There are different variations on it. So the gospel is the power of God to salvation, to all who believe. So we, we, we then drop through this, and then we start dropping into our black hole. And you can scream as we do this. I want some appropriate screams to emerge across the audience. Yes, yeah, good, 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 great, good scream. And we do. And then lo and behold, what do we discover? We discover that was what was written in Deuteronomy was exactly right. Don't we? You know that passage in Deuteronomy? Sorry for the tape, I'm a biblicist, but can't help myself. 33, Deuteronomy, there is no one like the God of Yeshurun who rides the heaven to help you and in his excellency 
excellency on the clouds. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. You've experienced holding on the inside. Lots of people here have experienced holding on the inside. It's what happens to us. As we drop down, we know the holding of God in us. And guys, you do not put that in you. It's there. What happens is our eyes are open and we become aware of what is. We do not make it happen. Okay? So, that's, um, that's the joy of it. And what you notice there, that you're alone, scared and hurt disappear. And the Holy Spirit will take what is mine and share it with you. And that's Jesus in you. Christ in us, the hope of glory. In that day you'll know that I'm in Dad, the Father. I'm in you and you are in me. Yeah. And that's the process of the 70 mile process. And then... What's happened to a black hole? And we become one like God is one. Okay? Bruce, I just think it's interesting that the Holy Spirit taking of what is mine and sharing with you, that Jesus picks three things in that upper room, right? My love, your love, my joy, your joy, my peace, your peace. That's right. The three core things at the beginning of the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's right. that, and that's what, that's what becomes ours. He shares yeah. his knowing. Exactly. Well, so, so the thing, principally um, for the tape, uh, Michael said, look, the Holy Spirit will take what is mine. And in the upper room, love, joy, and peace were the first three he threw out. But it's everything he's got. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't stop with that. The story we started today, there was um, a person from another country ringing me, accusing his partner because of an affair that's come to light because of the gospel preach the gospel i can now confess my sin to my partner good luck with that one here yeah, we've got it and it works it through and the mess takes off and they've got to process that right and accusing the partner the partner accusing them them also and then you need to forgive at some stage you've got to, you can't continue like this all i want out of you is you learn to speak in a non-violent way to your partner and we can talk more about that, how to speak in a non-violent way and, um, and then to be able to forgive your partner. I can't forgive my partner. I said, no, you can't. And let's just be real, no, no religious beating here. You can't. The Spirit will take what is Jesus and share it with you. Jesus can forgive your partner and you can share in that. And I just want you to keep praying that and lo and behold, it will happen. And it'll happen from the inside out. So it starts with love, joy, peace, but don't stop there, you get stuck at Christmas. Airy fairy, right? Yeah, they're very deep and real and proper. But for a lot of religious people, it's, it's just Christmas, right? It's real and true and deep. You're going to have deep needs, deep stuff to work through, deep stuff to face to help with people. And lo and behold, the Holy Spirit will take what Jesus has and share it in and through you from the bottom up. Now, that's the summary. That's the 70 mile version. And here's that Australian cartoonist again, who I love. When the heart is cut or cracked or broken, do not clutch it, let the wound lie open. Let the wind from the good old sea blow in to bathe the wound with salt and let it sting. Let a stray dog lick it, let a bird lit in the hole and sing. A simple song, like a tiny bell, and let it ring. Stay with your pain, face your pain, drop into your pain, be real, go loony, and you know, I love him. Um, so that's the end of that session, and that's that's the end of the um, flyover. We've become one, and um, we'll continue on the next session. Thank you. Good. Thank you.